My name is Vaid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Yeah, so my name is Amber Faruqi. I'm 20 years old. I'm a coach and mentor, and I'm from Chicago. Chicago. How are you guys doing with COVID-19? Um, we're dealing with it. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. I got I got a lot of homies. I got a lot of friends down in Chicago. Hopefully, yeah. everybody's staying safe. Right. So let's talk about fitness and coaching. Why mm -hmm. fitness coaching? It seems like every other person is in fitness now these days on IG. But tell me what what's going on. Is that a revolution? Are we trying to help everybody stay healthy? Yeah, I think right now it plays a big role because with everything going on, um, people need to pay attention to their bodies. And fitness isn't just physical I think it's also has a lot to do with mental um well-being of someone so yeah so here's my question for you I spoke to another coach yesterday also too if you had to put a percentage on it and I know we can never be exact but if you had to put a percentage on how many percent is what we eat daily how many percent is has to do with the exercise and the gym we go because it seems like I had the wrong impression before. I've been hearing 70, 80% is what you consume. 20, 30% is the activity that you do. Is that the same? Have you experienced that with the people that you train? Yeah, so I think they go 50-50. Um, diet plays a huge role and fitness plays, like working out plays another big role. It just depends on the person. But if you're working out and staying healthy and staying active, but you're not putting the good food and like, nutrients in your body then you're not fueling your body and it's gonna burn out it's not gonna get the nutrients it needs to be healthy you know you may be looking good for a little bit but in the long run it's not gonna do you any good and then if you're just fueling yourself with good nutrients but you're not working out or moving your body that's also you know long term not going to benefit you anyway you know you need to do both in order to be fit and feel healthy Give me three tips for entrepreneurs and business owners out there that may not have the luxury of time to make it to the gym or do the exercises in that in 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 a, in a specific facility. What are three tips that you got for us to stay healthy, meanwhile conduct our business? Because times are crazy. Sometimes you don't have that luxury of hitting the gym all the time. I know a lot of uh, a lot of individuals that are small business owners. I struggle with that also too. It wasn't because I was lazy. I was actually the opposite. I was working a lot more and doing it. But what are some of the three, two, three tips that we could implement on a daily basis? Yeah, so I know that having a busy schedule can really like conflict with working out and stuff. But I think that finding a routine that works for you is really, really, it helps. Like finding a routine, figuring out if working out in the morning is easier for you, you know, um, it's a priority. It's your health that matters. So you shouldn't just take it lightly and push it aside to the last thing on your list. You should really think about it. And then also, I feel like people, they say they don't have the time for it. But in reality, they are actually just lazy and they're not, you know, motivated. But it's not just motivation. It's discipline. So you need to find discipline and figure out why you want to work out. Like, ask yourself, whenever people tell me they're, they don't have motivation, I tell them, like, okay, you don't have motivation, but you know that you want to work out and you want to be healthy. So what's stopping you? And then they just tell me they don't have time or they're lazy or they don't know where to get started. But it's like, okay. You actually have people admitting to you that they're lazy? That is yeah. a cool interview. I told her, can you record some of that? That would be like the best YouTube video that I could watch. I want to find out that people are this humble and they're literally flat out or telling you they're lazy. That's yeah. never going to come out of my mouth for sure. <laughs> <laughs> people, they say it you know but it's just discipline it's fine like okay you're lazy but if you want to work out then you need to find discipline and mo like motivate yourself you know motivations from within it's not like some days I'm not motivated to work out but I'm disciplined all the time you know I know that I need to do this in order to have a healthy lifestyle and the lifestyle that I chose so talk to me about business coaching what do you know about business how are you going to help people take their business to the next level yeah, so, okay, going back, I, like, didn't decide that I wanted to become a fitness coach. It kind of just happened to me over time. Um, that's, like, a whole other long story, but it just happened to me over time and a lot of trial and error and everything, but 
um, I want to make a larger impact and I want to be able to show people that they're able to do it as well. So I didn't just want to stop fitness coaching. I wanted to impact a larger amount of people. And I know the number one struggle for people is starting, like whether it's for fitness or starting a business, whatever it is. I know that starting is like the biggest struggle because no one wants to be a beginner. They just want to jump to the, you know, end point. But it's like, no, you have to be a beginner. You have to go through trial and error to get to be like successful. So I never really had someone to guide me through my fitness coaching journey. So I want to be able to guide other entrepreneurs or people who want to be entrepreneurs um, and teach them how to leverage social media because that's what like I do and how to create content, how to build a personal brand and be authentic and make a bigger impact in the world. So, yeah. That's cool. Now in the process, you are talking about being profitable also too, right? Because right. when you say business coaching, and when you when somebody says that they're like 20 years old, I always question I'm like, okay, so tell me about your background. Tell me what gives you that authority to be able to help other people. What kind of a life experience have you had? What have you built? Let me see some track record. And I went through that when I started my business, right. especially in financial services, at a very young age. And everybody questioned me because of my age. They're like, what do you know about money? What do you know about this? How would you know this? You're too young. You're 25. You're 27. How would you know this? Like, I literally had people telling me in the meetings that they're like 65 years old and I'm younger than their own sons. How would I be able to help them when they have had their business for like 30 years, 40 right. years? I hadn't even been living for that long that they have conducted their business. So sometimes age is a good thing. Sometimes age is not a good thing. So you got to kind of work through that. And I see yeah. a lot of younger generation, you know, kind of take it personal when people ask that. But you got to be able to take punches, no? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, people always tell me, they're like, tw you're 20 years old. You don't know anything. Like, you haven't even begun your life. And I'm like, I've done a lot. Like, you know, I have experience. I have a background. Like, I have, you know, I'm still learning. But aren't we all? What's your, what's your favorite self-help book? Um, oh, there's so many. Okay. I think I... Give me the one that you kind of read twice or the one that you went and watched or you researched a little bit more than the other ones. I think Think and Grow Wish would probably be I'm reading it right now. I'm rereading it. So, yeah. yeah that, that was a good answer. You tricked me on that. That was a good answer. <laughs> I was going to get on your case while you're not doing Think and Grow Rich, but you kind yeah. of, that, that was good. Listen, Think and Grow Rich is the only book you're going to need. That's it. That's right. not my opinion. That's a fact. That is the <laughs> only book you're going to need. You read that book, Everything else is cool. Everything else is just an addition. But if you don't have this, it's like, you know, it's like going to gym and doing exit. You're like, you got to do your cardio. Like, it, you got to do it. That's just the way it's got to be. So, thinking grow is good. One last final message. How people could find you? Um, so, through my social media, um, Amber Faruqi is my Instagram. And I also have, I just started TikTok, actually. So, it's the Amber Faruqi on there. And then, yeah, everything else. I think I'm mainly on Instagram. Awesome. Yeah, because if they're above age 50, don't say TikTok because they don't know. Then you got to do the whole conversation what TikTok is. Let them right. get acclimated with Instagram first. One a step at a time, Amber. One step. Don't scare yeah. people off, right? I know. I'm still not on TikTok like I should be, but give, I'm trying to figure out IG first. You know, yeah. one, step, one, one, one platform at a time. But listen, thank you so much for spending this time with us. Uh, wish you a lot of luck and be prepared for getting a lot of punches in the face because of your age. So be prepared. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, as long as you don't give up, as long yeah. as you don't quit, you're going to okay. win. Yeah. Done deal. Keep up the good work. Nice talking to you. Okay. Thank you for having me. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.